welcome back. Big news today. Plus a little news to go over from last week, but big news today. So a while ago, uh, I don't remember if it had its own video or if I lumped it in with some other stuff, but one of the classes that I talked about really wanting in the game was some sort of partisan that could fight behind enemy lines. Today, there's an announcement for a new class called the Gorilla. Now, I haven't looked at it yet. So I'm really curious to see what their abilities are. I'm really hoping that they can go and they can fight in the gray zone. That's that's what I really want. Uh, my idea for them was that they would come out of, like, pre-positioned spawn points around the map, like cellars and little, like, hidey holes, like, like sewers, cellars, whatever, right? Places where they could hide, infiltrate, used to get around the map, you know, that sort of thing. That's where they would spawn instead of... You could probably have the option to spawn at, like, a traditional spawn point and fight like a normal soldier, but the whole point of them was that they would be able to spawn in and fight in the enemy gray zone. So, let's see what we get. Behind enemy lines. So... The soldiers in these squads have a difficult task to sow the seeds of chaos in enemy ranks. The most important and distinctive feature of the new class is their ability to enter the enemy's uh, battle area without time restrictions. The only area that remains off-limits are the infantry and vehicle spawn zones. It's also worth mentioning that the overall mission boundaries for guerrillas remain unchanged. Like all other classes, they can't stray too far from the main battlefield. So, I'm curious to see what that actually means. Um... It seems like they'll have an expanded area that they can go into, but it seems like the battlefield still moves as the objectives do. So, we will see. In addition to that, you can never have too many explosives. Gorillas can take significantly more TNT charges into battle, as many as five of them. And they can set up elaborate ambushes and fight tanks who uh, think that staying outside the general battle area will save them. Alright, so... There you go, right there. They're going to be able to go and fight in the gray zone. What's yours is now ours. They have a special ammo pouch in which they can carry ammo for a wide variety of weapons. When you pick up a weapon, you'll get full ammo for it. So, they actually get rewarded for looting the enemy. I love that. So you'll be able to go and, like, let's say you're, I don't know, an American, right? And you're, I assume, playing as a, a French guy in Normandy. And you go and you kill the German, and you grab his, like, MP40. You don't have to worry about only having one mag for it. You get it all. Love it. So, they will help you countless times in completing combat missions behind enemy lines. So, they have a pre-order bundle coming. It includes two premium guerrilla squads, one for the USSR and one for Germany. You'll get a fancy MP40 nickname uh, decal. You'll get... A fancy Soviet guerrilla portrait. So we have the Soviet guerrillas at BR2 with MP40s, and we have the Volksturm with the PPS43, also at BR2. I'm curious if, because these guys just have MP40s and these guys just have PPS43s. It is an unusual weapon for their nation, so I feel like you're probably not going to be able to swap them out. But the MP40 and the PPS43 are tech tree weapons, so I'm kind of curious to see if you can swap them out. Additionally, this new soldier class will be featured in the upcoming Reinforcement Received event. So don't you worry, all the nations will get them. These are definitely more interesting to me than the rocket artillery were. Like, I was really looking forward to rocket artillery. My problem with rocket artillery is that it turned out to basically just be reskinned normal artillery, and I wanted it to be, like, mechanically different than traditional artillery. These guys, though, they fill another niche that I've long been looking for in this game, and this type of soldier, like... They're going to be really annoying. Don't get me wrong. Like, Especially if you get more than one of them on your lineup, they're going to be really annoying. Because like, they may not be able to go into the infantry spawn point, and they may not be able to go into the tank spawn point. But if they can go into the gray zone, they're going to be really annoying. Because you're going to be walking up to the objective, and you're going to get shot in the back. And I can tell you from War Thunder, it's extremely annoying when, like, a puma rushes across the map and starts shooting you in the back, and you don't even know he's there. But, but, I also think that this is going to 
help deal with the t the gray zone camping tank complaint that people have had for a long time in this game and i think it causes you to have a more interesting game like the paratroopers brought in a level of asymmetry or mobility warfare that we didn't previously have and it was kind of expanded on with the half tracks i think it comes full circle with these guys because now now you're covering your infiltrators you're covering your like rapid deployment you're covering your maneuver so i just think it makes it a more interesting and nuanced experience where you can do more stuff um they sound like they're going to spawn in like normal soldiers though so you're still going to have to fight your way through the enemy lines and break the enemy lines I feel like spawn points are going to be your friend there. Like, if you can get a spawn point down near the enemy lines, and then when your squad gets wiped, you come back in as these guys and go into the enemy gray zone, I feel like that's probably going to be your best bet. But, I mean, depending on the team you're playing and the map you're on, you can break enemy lines somewhat easily. It just depends. Some of the maps in Enlisted aren't big enough and don't have, like, a wide enough front for you to really effectively break the enemy's lines because... There's just constant combat across the whole front. So it kind of depends. But the, especially some of the more urban maps where you can, like, weasel your way between buildings and go down alleyways and whatnot. Um, and you might only have to fight, like, one other squad to get where you're going. Some of those it'll be easier to do on. Still, I think that they're going to be really interesting. They're obviously not going to be the most broken, powerful thing in the game. Um, the idea of them setting more ambushes with TNT is a neat idea. Um, now, when they say TNT, I assume that they mean the TNT slot in which you can also put AT mines. And I think that's going to be like, if, if that's the case, right? If it's not just more grenades, because I, personally, I prefer the throwable TNT to the, like, clacker TNT. Um, but if if you can carry more TNT slots... And you can put AT mines into those slots. Going in with, like, this is a four-man squad, I think. At least there's, like, four guys in that picture. So going in with this four-man infiltrator squad with, like, five mines. So theoretically, you could have, like, 20 AT mines. Oh, man, you could make it a nightmare to get out of there with a tank. I'm curious how that's going to work, though. Like, they might actually lock the slots so it's it's just TNT. But, like, normally the TNT slot gets filled with clacker TNT, AT mines, and AP mines. And, like, you could do the same thing with AP mines. Just throw those fuckers all over the place. So, I, I'm curious to see how they implement it. It might be that you have your one slot that you can put a mine in just like normal. And then the next four slots are strictly clacker TNT. Which wouldn't be bad. Um, I, I think the issue there is when you put down TNT, it works the same way that like C4 does in, I don't know, like COD or Battlefield, right? So if you put down like one TNT brick, you, you clack once, you clack it off. I'm pretty sure if you put down two TNT bricks, if you clack once, you clack both off. What I would like to see if, if we're going to do these like elaborate ambushes is have each TNT have its own clacker. And I don't know what the best way of handling that is. It, it might just be one clack, one TNT in the order that you put it down. Like, that's an easy solution for it, I guess. But I think what I would like to see is when you place your, your TNT, you have the option to, uh, to like, hold right-click, and you'll also place your clacker. So you could put, like, here's TNT, here's clacker, and then you'd, like, run between them. So you could have, like, three or so, like, I don't know, you can hold up to five, right? But you could have, like, three or four TNT charges put on, like, different parts of this road. Or, like, maybe you've got one at a crossroad, and then you've got a few going down the road. And so as, like, the half-track shows up, you collect the first one when he gets almost to the intersection. So then when the when a tank rolls up behind him, then you can clack the next one. It's just... Otherwise, I don't feel like you're really setting these elaborate ambushes. I feel like you're just throwing down a block of TNT and, and waiting, and then you're replacing it, which is which is fine, but I think it would be cool to be able to put down all of your TNT and actually have an ambush set up and clack them off separately. But, you know, that might be too complex for 
enlisted. It might not have like a very eloquent way to implement something like that. But I think the potential for these guys is really cool. So, I mean, right now, we're just getting the Soviet partisans and we're getting the uh, the Germans. But, like, there were so many different resistance groups in World War II. And, oh, man, like, we we could get stuff from, from where Czechoslovakia was. Um, we could get stuff from like Yugoslavia and like Croatia in that area. We could get um, we could get Italian partisans. We could get French. Like pretty much every major country, well, pretty much every country period that was invaded in World War II had some sort of resistance, and some of them were really, really successful. And this is a great opportunity to highlight some of them. Like, right now we have, oh, here's the Volksturm, oh, here's the Soviets. I feel like everybody expects them. It's, it's probably going to have, like, some French resistance next. But, like, oh, man, we, we could get some really cool units. Plus, I, I know that our Japanese maps are really limited right now, but this is actually a pretty decent opportunity, even though they wouldn't be fighting in the right location, to put in some, like, Chinese resistance. So, I don't know. I, I think this opens the door to a lot of really interesting squads that we haven't really had a good way of implementing before. Like, we could have always taken a squad and made them, like, uh, the Moroccan squad for um, for the Allies, uh, with the Vickers Berthiers, right? They're they're like a like a provisional provincial troops, right? They could have always done something like that, where they gave you an assault squad, and the assault squad were like part of Tito's resistance or whatever, and that would have worked fine. It wouldn't have been like a bad way to implement it. But now that they have dedicated guerrillas, I feel like it's a more eloquent way to highlight some of these really interesting like conflict zones that happened throughout the war. And I really want to see what they do with it. So let me know what you think down below. I think this is probably the most exciting uh, release we've gotten this year. Uh, like I'm trying to think, right? Like there, there have been a few decent things. Like when we got the, uh, the armed half tracks, that was kind of neat. Um, although I, I was a little bit disappointed at, like, where they landed BR-wise, but they're, they're a little bit better now. Um, and Assault Engineers coming back was nice, but, like, we haven't really had a whole lot of, of, like, ooh, ah, this is gonna be really cool. I, I guess there's the KV-2. The KV-2 is pretty cool. Um, but this is probably the most interesting thing that we've seen all year. And it's because they actually have mechanics that, that set them apart and differentiate them from a lot of the other soldiery that you have in your enlisted collection. So I'm looking forward to these guys. I think they're going to be really cool. I'm also looking forward to seeing what the event that they come in ends up looking like. So as per usual, get out there, kick ass, take names, and win your games.